rolling. Hello everyone on YouTube, it's Roz from Roz.com here. I have my friend, long-term friend, Mr. Uh, we call him Bow. Bow, yeah. yeah his uh, nickname on the forum is uh, Wild Pib. Wild Pib, yes. And uh, I've known him for a very long time. Um, I met him back in, what, 2012, I think? Yeah. Or 20? Uh, 20? I think it's about a four year from now, so yeah, 2013. Four. 13, maybe? 2013, okay. yeah. And, um, you know, he had about, oh, about 400,000, 390,000 on his truck when I met him. When I first got the truck, it was about like 269,000, but when I met you, it was about like 450. Oh, 450, okay. 450, 460. So I did 100,000 mile, 100, miles on the truck I bought, and I got a problem. And it you had a lot of troubles. A yeah. lot of trouble, check engine line here and there. Even Bugs. You go, even you go to the dealer shop, and it still come out there one day later, still check engine line. Yeah. And then you came over here asking yeah. for some help. You found yeah. my forum. Uh, I did try and everything. I, I did try everything, even going to the dealer to get it, you know, check it out. It's still there. And there's one funny thing that you lie about is I tried the food cap with a gasket. You keep laughing about that. He told me when he got here a long time ago something I thought was pretty funny. I'd like for you to share that. Uh, that was about like that. A lot of check engine lie going to different shop, different uh, dealer, and it's still there. And I just heard from the guy with the car, car ga mechanic gas station, yeah. about the, the gas station they said it might be about the fuel cap gasket the fuel cap gasket yeah yeah so what i did i tried to buy that thing but international don't sell it out they sell the whole the cap. fuel cap yeah. it's about 80 bucks for yeah. the normal one the chrome one's about 100 bucks something so i yeah. have to get off to can work dealer to buy the gasket only try it on and they're still there but sometimes it works so uh, sometimes mysteriously so, yeah. your dps problems will go yeah. away when you tighten your fuel cap way yeah. up it was just coincidental. Just, we found I, it later, that's but, what I think. Yeah, he thought, you know, tighten the fuel cap, tighten the fuel cap. But you kept doing that. You kept using pliers, yeah. and it just kept, yeah, yeah, kept, tightening kept having it. problems. Kept double gasket on double Well, there's no to... sensor in the fuel tank. There's no sensor in the fuel system that will affect the uh, the DPF, and, uh, you know, unfortunately. Except for the fuel rail, uh, you know, fuel pressure sensors on the engine, which, you know, they have nothing yeah. to do with how, how tight yeah. your cap is. Yeah. But uh, well, I thought it was I, funny. You at know. that time, I don't know anything about your forums. When I get in there, I start learning about the IMF sensor, do all yeah. the EGR tune-ups, so it's getting better. Yeah, you got it a lot better. Now yeah. you had no problems hardly no. since uh, since you got it. Yeah. What, what have you done to had to do the truck since you've gotten it, since uh, you cleaned it all up and got it all fixed uh, better yourself? It's just the turbo and the VGT that I have to get the guy when I first don't know anything about the truck. Yeah. Since then, I follow your forum, your book, okay. and everything. Nothing else has been done. Oh, that's good. Well, the you clutch, keep yeah. the maintenance. You know, you've yeah, been doing the regular clutch, maintenance. Yes, like because of the, yeah, yeah, the clutch because of the aging. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's about a million miles that I changed the clutch. So now you have how many miles on it? A million miles plus about like 50,000 miles in there. So a million know, and yeah. 50,000? Yeah, something in there. That's a lot of miles. Well, it's getting for, old. Yeah. Well, I recommend doing the rod main bearings at 800,000 miles. That's what so I mean, it's a little right past now. due. I didn't know. <laughs> well, it's okay. Uh, your truck runs clean like mine does. You drive, you know, 58, 60. You get eight plus miles uh, to the gallon. 57, 58 when I'm yeah. like, trying to go like a little slight hill, but when I'm on the on the, on the the flat surface, about like 60, 62. Okay. But whatever the hill is, it won't get me more than 15 power boot. I just doubt gear and get it up. So there. you always keep your boost at 15 yes, or sir. less. Yes, sir. And you get eight plus miles to the gallon yes, everywhere. Yes, sir. And as soon as the gear is right there and the RPM starts 16, just keep it hanging there. Don't crush it more. Just keep it that speed low going. And then until you can't go no more, yeah. ship the gear. But if you go past that, ship up the gear. That's it. Yeah. yeah so stay in the higher RPM range when you're yeah. going up the hill and lower RPM range when you're going down the road. That's what okay. I recommend. Yeah. Yeah. The last three trip when I had into your place, I was at home. I think I put about like 4,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. According to the, uh, the field take everything, I got above eight. That's and good. And the load weighs about like 25 to 5, 10,000. So. Yeah. But I do all here, the 77, S 77, North Carolina, I do everywhere. So it just stay above eight, so that's... Okay. So we're here today because you said you want a little help changing your rod main bearings. You're going to do yeah. it yourself. With that's the, a messy job. With the oil pump, too. And the oil pump. That's a messy job. Okay. Because you're upside down, everything's dripping in your face. You're pulling the caps and main bolts off. Doesn't matter You're pulling the, the screws out doesn't of the matter. rods and everything. And when those things come apart, all the oil pours out of the cam and pours out of the cross channels into your face and you, know, you know so you're going to get wet you're going to get we're, well i've got some tyvek suits you can have a tyvek suit if you want you know some big white things that they wear uh -huh. i have a bunch of those that i okay. bought a long time ago i just use them one. when i get really <laughs> dirty yeah when i get really dirty i'll put one of those on but the reason i don't wear the gutter to the shower the clothes are okay <laughs> <laughs> i just want to clean here before i get into the, the shower tub that's all <laughs> yeah yeah but um 
you know, he just wants to do his rod main bearings. You already did your overhead. You were just did, your overhead about 50,000 miles, 50, miles ago. So yeah. it doesn't need to be done. And I did it here with you. Okay. Yeah, we did it here. And this is my fifth time over here to do the head, uh, the headset over the fifth time. The fifth? Okay. The fifth time. Since I got the truck 400,000. 400, so you do it every 100K though. Yeah. Right now, every 400K before about every 200K before 1 million mile hit me. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's better to do it more often when it gets really old to keep an eye on things. Yes, sir. So, because it's, it's, you know, the wear starts to accelerate. So we're going to have to take your bumper off, uh, the lower bumper anyway. We've got a little canopy here. We kind of home shifted a canopy up there just for now to throw it up there in case we get a sprinkle because it has been kind of on and off weather. And um, we got it jacked up on one side on, uh, you know, a set of blocks over there, a little ramp so you can get a little more room under it. But you'll have to remove the bumper. Uh, you'll have to pull the oil pan off, obviously. We're going to have to drain the oil to do that. I have uh, one of those containers that will hold all 11 gallons, plus a little bit. And I keep it really clean. So uh, we can drain your oil into the container, and then we can put your oil back in. And the reason why we'll put your oil back in is because when we put the rod main bearings in, we're going to be using, uh, you know, Permatex Ultra Slick, and we're going to be, you know, doing a lot of work under there. We're going to be using brake cleaner to clean it up. And uh, it's going to contaminate whatever oil we put in. So we're going to put your old oil back in. We'll make sure that it stays clean. And uh, then you, you can, you know, just take it from here to an oil change place or somewhere. Like you said, you're going to drive it home and then yeah. change your own oil. That way, the contamination gets in the old oil. Drive it a little bit, flush the old oil through it one time, and then get rid of it and put good, clean oil in it. Uh, you know, that's not a bad idea. So. That, that's how we're going to go about doing it today. Do you want to take a look at If the, the oil was really old and nasty, you know, we would change it. But his oil is not that old. Oh, that, that's why I said you want to check out the oil. Oh, uh, it's take 10,000 yeah. miles plus? It's about 10,000 miles on his oil. His oil stays clean like mine does because it was all the same things I do. And uh, take a look at that. It's going, to be, it's going to show low because we're up on this ramp. Yeah. It's that way. Uh -huh. I think we're going to be a little low on the stick here. But uh, that's his oil. This oil is clean enough to reuse if we keep it clean, uh, you know, long enough for him to flush his engine with it and then do an oil change, you know. Okay. So, uh, we'll do that and, uh, you know, you can drive that how many, a little bit of mileage back to the house. But, uh, yeah, I'll help you do that, you know, keep you some guidance and keep you from screwing it up. Thank you. You say you've never done it before. Nope. Uh, but you're not afraid to work on your truck, so. No. So let's uh, let's, go <laughs> let's go at it. Let's go at it. Cut.